My dear and beloved in Christ, the last Sunday of the year reminds me of the last day of school. And teachers have the tests completed, the grades are pretty much done, and then children are just uh, checking the time, and then when the bell rings, they run out. This past year has gone very quickly. Most of the tests have been completed. There's just a few more days. And I'd like to start with a poem by Father Abraham Ryan. He said, How swift they go, life's many years, with their winds of woe and their storms of tears, and their darkest nights whose shadowy slopes are lit with flashes of starriest hopes, and their sunshiny days in whose calm heaven loom the clouds of the tempest, the shadows of gloom. So in these lines, this priest has penned the thoughts in our hearts on this second to the last day of the old year. Days of tears and days of smiles. Days of loss and days of gain. Days of health and days of sickness. Days of birth and days of death. Days of fear and days of courage. Days of toil and days of rest. We've seen them all during the past year. My dearly beloved in Christ, a happy coming New Year is my sincere wish to every one of you. At the same time, I wish to remind you where and how to find happiness. As doctors give you prescriptions to help you recover or preserve your health, so people give us many prescriptions for being happy. The world says sinful pleasures will give you happiness. The miser cries, more money, and I'll be happy. God gives us a prescription for true happiness in Tuesday's epistle. For the grace of God our Savior has appeared to all men, instructing us in order that rejecting ungodliness and worldly lust, we might live temperately and justly and piously in this world, looking for the blessed hope and glorious coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So today I'd just like to summarize some very basics of the spiritual life. And uh, years ago, Abbot Leonard Giardina in Alabama, a Benedictine monk, a Benedictine abbot, he had a little newsletter, and then he wrote some beautiful things. So I'd just like to discuss them. First, he said, trust in God. With all your strength and energy, trust in God. Be sure to live in such a way that God can trust you. Trust begets trust, just as love begets love. And then after St. Dominic Savio, my patron, died, shortly after that he appeared to his teacher, St. John Bosco. And then he showed St. John Bosco all the people who were either Salesians, in other words, his priest, or were his pupils who were influenced by him. They were saved by St. John Bosco or, or by his priests and seminarians, and also many that were guided into the religious vocation as priest and religious. And he told them, count them if you can. There were just a very large number. But then he said, but the number would be a hundred million times more numerous if only you had greater trust and faith in the Lord. My dearly beloved Christ, the second thing I'd like to read about is the rosary. He says, say the Holy Rosary every day and every day. Each day gather up your family and together pray the rosary in the privacy of your homes, quietly, in the privacy of, of your loving hearts. And sometimes we say, look, I'm just too busy. I don't have time for the rosary. Okay, 20 minutes or so to take pray the rosary well, but you have time for television, movies, Facebook, your iPad, your phone, your computer, other things. Okay, you can make, t if you have time for all of that, you can have time for the rosary each day. And then he says, dedicate your entire life to prayer. Not a multitude of prayers, but prayer. Dedicate your lives to genuine penance, sacrifice, and prudent mortification, the subduing of sinful nature and the performance 
of good works. And then he talks about humility. He says, humility is not the greatest of virtues. It does not compare with the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. But humility is the element which brings all virtue. Everything we do, every breath we take into proper focus with the love of God. Our love of God is not measured by the time we spend on our knees, and it's not measured by the number of prayers we utter. All such exercises are good in themselves, but they do not necessarily indicate love. Our love of God is measured by the amount of effort and energy and determination and resolution and perseverance and single-mindedness we put in bringing our bodies into subjection. And this is doing the will of God. And this is love. And this is prayer. And I'd just like to read a little bit of what St. Bernard said about humility. He said, It's a great evil if you prefer yourself to anyone else. However much you humble yourself, continues the saint, and consider yourself to be less than what you really are, you incur no danger in the thought. But if you exalt yourself above what is due to you, and in your heart prefer yourself to a single person whom you esteem equal or inferior, it's a great evil and an awful danger. And then he explains this by comparison. He says, imagine that you have to pass under a low gateway quite out of proportion with your statue, stature, stature. In other words, you're tall or a certain height, and then this thing is pretty low. He says, in such a case, you bend an inch lower than necessary. There's no harm done. You only increase your chance of safety. But if you bend ever so little less than is needed, you will surely strike your head and be bruised. In like manner, however much you humble yourself before your neighbor, you cannot receive harm, but you will profit by this lowering of yourself, while the least self-preference may work your ruin. And then lastly, he talks about charity. He says, we must love one another. And he says in capital letters, we must love one another as our Heavenly Father loves us. It is this pure and unfeigned love that we have for one another that makes us members of an awesome family, a chosen family, a family of children, God's children, safe, unheard, at peace, filled with joy and serenity, children who can and do trust without fear. So there may, be, ha may even happen at churches, some people you don't like or there's different issues, then please resolve it and then just practice charity. And then in the coming football game, um, even though there's two different churches, uh, it's still one spiritual family, and then we should um, get along with the other, uh, the spectators, treat them with charity, and then the players, um, just practice Christian charity. You can still play to win, but just practice um, charity. I'd just like to close with a story. Two Indian boys were scampering about the woods one day, when a strange thing happened. They had been running through the woods with their eyes glued on the ground for tracks on the earth. What sort of tracks do you think they were looking for? There was a big bear roaming in the forest and those two Indian boys were out to get him. They had knives in their belts and you could tell by the fearless look in their eyes that they meant business. Well, long they ran through the forest looking for bear tracks when suddenly one of them stopped short and picked up something from the ground. Something very strange indeed. Something that neither of them had ever seen before. It was a shiny gold pocket watch. The boys looked at the watch curiously for some of them for some time with a puzzled expression on their faces. They turned it over and over, shook it, held it to their ears, and still they didn't know what to make of it. Where do you think it, this thing came from out here in the forest, one of them asked. Me don't know, said the other. Me never seen anything like this around here before. Me wonder how it got here. Me wonder too. Do you think it fell out of the sky or something maybe? Maybe. Me don't know. The boys looked at the watch some more 
and saw the second hand moving around and listened attentively to the tick tick of the watch. Me wonder what this thing is for. Yeah, me too. Maybe it's an animal or something, an insect or a toad. We don't know where it came from or what it's for, one of them said in despair. Maybe we figured out how it works anyway. Yes, maybe, said the other. While the boys wound and wound the watch until the spring broke. They opened up the front and twisted the hands. They opened up the back. Pretty soon the gold watch was lying all over the ground in pieces. And still the boys had not discovered where the watch had come from or what it was for or how it worked. Naturally, a watch is no good to anyone unless he knows the answers to these questions. The two boys looked at each other and said, let's go home. And off they ran to their wigwam, leaving the broken watch on the ground. In closing, ask yourself the question the Indian boys asked each other about the watch. Ask yourself first, where did I come from? The answer is easy. God made me. Well then, what am I for? The answer is still easy. To know, love, and serve God in this life and to be happy with him in this and in the next. Well then, how do I work? You work properly when you believe and obey the teachings of God's church, the Catholic Church. The Indian boys didn't know where the watch came from or what it was for or how it worked, and so they broke it. People who don't know where they came from or what they're for or how they work properly will have a life that will be broken and may be spoiled forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.